Welcome back to this lesson in algebra. We're going to be now working on simplifying expressions that involve multiplication. So we're going to be multiplying things, we'll have fractions involved, we'll have some variables involved, and we'll just be simplifying the expressions using the rules that we already know about how to multiply things. And just to review and make sure that you're on the same page with me, the general rules of multiplication go like this. If you're multiplying a positive number times a positive number, this is the kind of things we you know, always multiply all the time when we first learn multiplications, then you will always get a positive number. That makes sense, right? This is the simple example of, for instance, three times four, right? It's a positive three and a positive four, so the answer you get is a positive, and you all know the answer is 12. Now, whenever you're doing a multiplication of a negative term or number times a negative term or a number, then you always get the exact same thing out. You always get, again, a positive answer. So the example, a simple example here would be like negative two uh, times negative three. Since it's negative times negative, you always get a positive out from that. And so the answer is two times three is six, and the final answer is actually positive. So positive times positive, you always give you positive. Negative times negative also gives you a positive. Now we have to look at what happens. So the way to remember it easily is if the, if the signs of the two things you're multiplying are the same, either both positive or both negative, then the answer you get is always positive. That's the easy way to remember multiplication. Also, the same rules apply to division. We'll talk about division in the next lesson or so. Uh, but anyway, when you have the same signs, you get positive answers. Uh, but then what happens when we have different signs? Let's say you have either a positive number times a negative number or a negative timer, uh, number or term times a positive number or term. Well, the answer that you get there for either one of these is basically going to be a negative quantity. So if the signs are the same, no matter what they are, you get positive answers. If the signs are different, when you multiply, you get a negative uh, term. So for instance, if you have 7 uh, times negative 2, since it's positive times negative, it's going to be 14, but it's going to be a negative 14 because you'll always get a negative answer at the end. And another example of this guy, very simply, if you had negative 5 times positive 2, the signs are different here. And so you're going to get 5 times 2 is 10, but it'll be negative 10. So I'm just kind of reviewing these rules. The essential idea is if the two signs that you're multiplying by are either both positive or both negative, you will always get positive answers. And if the signs that you're, things that you're multiplying are different, either positive times negative or negative times positive, but if they don't match, you will always get negatives. So it's actually much, much easier to multiply things together. Also, these same rules are going to apply to division. Uh, it's easier to do multiplication and division than it actually is to add them. Because when you add them, you have to figure out which one has the larger absolute value and all of that. When you're multiplying, it's very simple. So now that we have a good review under our belts, Let's apply it to a little more complicated type of things, and, uh, including order of operations. So let's say you have 5 uh, times negative 2 times negative 7 times negative 3. So what do we do? We try to do everything inside the parentheses first, but all we have is numbers, so uh, there's nothing to do. And then we don't have any exponents. We don't have any uh, addition or subtraction. All we have is multiplication, so we do it left to right. So what we do in the next step is we do the first two, but here it's 5 times 2 is 10, but they're different signs, like here. So it's going to be negative 10. And then we have still to multiply by the remaining items on our list. Now in the next step, we again go left to right, and we multiply these two together. 10 times 7 is 70. But since it's negative times negative, we're going to get a positive 70. And then that's going to be multiplied again by negative 3. And then finally, 70 times negative 3, it's different signs, which goes under this rule. So you get a negative, and 7 times 3 is 21, so it'll be 210. So negative 210. Very important to do this in steps. You see, a lot of students will just start multiplying, 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 and then just figure out the sign at the end. It's actually much easier to make a mistake doing it that way. What I always say is when you have a big long thing to multiply by, just go in order and write another step. Go in order, write another step. Because you'll make less, less chance, uh, less possibility for errors. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, do another one. We'll be working in a couple of fractions uh, here sometimes. Let's say we have 9 times negative 1 7th times 1 3rd times negative 28. Now, I'm assuming that we all know how to deal with fractions, but I'll, I'll walk you through it as we, as we go here as well. 
What we have is the same kind of deal though. We're multiplying things, so we just go left to right. So we only have to focus on the nine times the one seventh. So when you have a number times a fraction or a fraction times a fraction, all you do is you multiply the tops of the fractions, the numerators, and then separately you multiply the denominator. So multiplying fractions is, is much easier than adding fractions, actually. So don't forget this nine is really nine over one. So the way you handle it is the numerators will be nine times one, uh, but you have a negative sign there, so it would be nine times negative one, so you're gonna get a negative nine on top. But on the bottom of this nine, there's an invisible one. One times seven is seven. Nine times one is nine, and then on the bottom, one times seven is seven, so if you cover up the, the negative sign, that you get the fractional part, but then you have a positive times a negative, which gives you a negative. It doesn't matter where you put this negative. You can put it on the top next to the nine, you can put it on the bottom next to the seven, you can even write it out in front of the fraction. As long as you have a negative sign somewhere there, then you know that that fraction is negative. So there you have negative nine sevenths. And then what you're going to have over here is you have to still multiply by the one-third, and then you still have to multiply by the negative 28, which we'll do in the next set of steps. Now, there's a couple ways you can do the next multiplication. I mean, you can say 9 times 1, which is the numerators multiplied, and then 7 times 3, the denominators multiplied, and then simplify that. That's fine. But if you remember, we learned in algebra that when you're multiplying things, if you have some um, term on the top and term on the bottom where I can find a common factor, then I can actually simplify it before doing the multiplication. So there's, there's really more than one way to do every problem. <clears throat> we can either multiply everything and then simplify the answer, or we can try to simplify first and then do the multiplication. In this case, I notice, <clears throat> since I have a, a 3 and a 9, and they're on the top and bottom of the fraction, 3 divided by 3 is 1, so I will strike it out because it's just an invisible 1 there, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. So I haven't done any magic here. All I've done is I've said, Basically, I can divide the top and bottom of all of this stuff by the same number, and I'm going to choose to divide the bottom by 3, which gives me 1, and th divide the 9 by 3, which gives me 3. The negative sign, all that stuff is still in place. So now what I have is negative 3 times 1, which gives me negative 3, and on the bottom, 7 times, uh-oh, I struck through a 3. What does that mean? Well, there's an invisible 1 here. 7 times 1 is 7. All right, and I still have to multiply by a negative 28. All right, but this negative 20 is really 28 over 1, right? So what I really have, if you really want to look at it, you, again, there's a couple ways you could do it. I can multiply the 3 times the 28 and the 7 times the 1, and then simplify the fraction. But now I just happen to notice I have a 7 and a 28, and I can divide both of those things by something common. 7 divided by 7 is 1, so I'll go ahead and write the 1 there. You can leave it, uh, can leave it alone and not do that if you want. And 28 divided by 7 is 4. Negative sign's still there. I haven't taken anything away. I'm just canceling by dividing by common terms. So what I will have here, negative 3 times 4 is negative 12, because negative times, po I'm sorry, positive 12, because negative times negative is positive. 3 times 4 is 12. On the bottom, I have 1 times 1, which is 1. And so the answer I'm going to get is 12. And that's the final answer, positive 12. So we're, we're just simply getting practice multiplying things, keeping track of the signs, negative times negative is positive, and so on. But at the same time, getting practice with canceling terms on top and bottom and some fractions, and later we'll get into variables and things like that. But all of the rules are the same as far as the negative and positive numbers go, as far as the multiplication rules. All right, so let's say we have, um, let's say we have 0.5, times negative 6, times negative 4, times negative 0 0.2. The same exact rules apply. It's just we have some decimals here. So we work on the first two first. What is 0.5 times 6? It's going to be 3, but it's positive times negative, which means it's got to be a negative answer. We still have to multiply by the negative 4 and the negative 0 0.2. Now we work on this guy here. 3 times 4 is 12 but it's negative times negative, which means positive 12. And then uh, we have to mul continue multiplying by 0 0.2 right here. And then our final multiplication, two times, I'm sorry, 12 times 0.2, if you multiply that out, you're gonna get 2.4, but it'll be negative 2.4 because positive times negative gives you negative, right? So the answer is 2.4. All right, now, up till now, it's all been numbers, it's all been fractions. Now we're gonna do the same kind of deal exactly the same kind of work, 
except we'll introduce some variables in play. So let's say, for instance, you have 2 times negative 5x uh, times negative 6y. Now, just because there's an x here and just because there's a y here, uh, it shouldn't change anything. I mean, x and y just represent numbers. We, they're variables. We don't know what they are. It's something in this particular problem. We can't figure out what they are, but they just represent numbers. So the same rules of multiplication apply. So what we're going to have is we multiply the first term, these guys, and when you multiply, you multiply the numbers, and the variable is just going to come along for the ride because he's multiplied as well. But we have 2 times 5 is 10, but it'll be negative 10 because negative times positive always gives you negative, and the x comes along for the ride because he's still multiplied times negative 6y. So we just multiplied the first term, and we get this, but now we have a negative times a negative. So this means that we're going to get a positive answer. So we're going to get a positive answer, and then 10 times 6 is 60, and x times y is xy. So you see, we don't know what x is, and we don't know what y is, so we have to kind of carry them along, because we can multiply the numbers, we can do that, but x is still multiplied by everything, just like it is in the answer, and y is still multiplied by everything, just like it is in the answer. So the bottom line is, is you multiply the numbers that you, that you can, and the variables just kind of come along, because we don't know what they are, but we know that we're still multiplying by them, and the signs work exactly the same way. Negative time negative is positive uh, in this case. What if we had uh, negative a times negative 2b times negative 3c, right? Same kind of thing, term times term times term. So we just work on the first terms first. And we say, OK, negative times negative is positive. So I know it's going to be positive. And what is it going to be? Well, the only number here is 1 times 2. So it'll be 2 times a times b. I can't do anything with the variables. They stay together, multiplied together. Negative times negative gives you positive, And I still have to multiply by the negative 3c. So in the next step, it'll be 2 times 3 is 6, but it'll be negative because negative times positive is negative. And then the a is still multiplied, the b is still multiplied, and the c now from this is still multiplied altogether. So you get negative 6 uh, abc, and that's the final answer. All right. What if we had? Um, let's change colors a little bit. Let's say we had, uh, in parentheses, let's say we had negative 6 minus 4, like this. And then let's say we had negative 6 plus 5. What do we do with this? So we have to go and use order of operations. So in all the other problems, there was nothing inside that we could do. But here we can do something inside of here, and here we can do something inside of here. So inside of these parentheses, what do we have? Negative 6 minus 4, and we've done that kind of stuff before. So negative... Uh, plus a negative or negative minus something is the same exact thing. You're going to get negative 10 here because 6 plus 4 is 10. And then because it's a negative and you're subtracting, or you can think of it as negative plus a negative quantity means you're always going to get a negative number. You add the absolute values and you take the negative sign there, so you get negative 10. And then here you have the same sort of thing. You're adding opposite signs. So basically you subtract them. 6 minus 5 is 1. And the sign goes with the larger absolute value, which is the negative 6. All right. So now what you have is two numbers multiplied. Negative times negative is positive, and of course, 10 times 1 is 10. So you get positive 10 is the final answer. If you're confused at all on how we add these negative numbers or subtract them, then go back to the lessons that we've done many, many times on how to add and subtract negative numbers and positive numbers and get practice with that. All right, last problem. What if we have uh, 12 times negative 1 raised to the seventh power times negative 2 raised to the 3 power. How do we handle that? So the problem is we do have multiplication of terms, but we also have exponents going on. And if you remember back from order of operations, we do parentheses first, and then right under that is basically exponents that we work on next. So we have to take care of the exponent here and also separately the exponent there before we can do any of the multiplication, which comes down later. So then you have to ask yourself, what is negative 1 to the 7th power? Well, if you think about it, uh, negative 1 to the 7th power is, what is it? It's negative 1 times itself 7 times. I'm trying to write this as fast as I can. Negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. How many do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I need one more time. So you see what's going to happen. The 1's are multiplied, so you get a 1. But then it depends on how many of them as to what the sign is going to be. So if we multiply the first two, that's going to give you a positive 1. 
times negative one will begin make it negative, then times negative, that'll make it positive, times negative, that'll make it negative, times negative, that'll make it positive, times negative, uh, that'll make it negative again. So it's gonna be a negative one is the answer, okay? Because for each one of these multiplied together, another way, there's lots of ways to do this actually. These two guys, when you think about it, are gonna give you positive one, right? And these two guys multiplied together are gonna give you also positive one. And these two guys are gonna multiply together, that's gonna give you a positive one. So what you really have is positive one times positive one times positive one from these, but then you have times negative one. That's why the final answer makes it negative. Every time you multiply again and again and again, it flips the sign positive, negative, positive, negative. It's like rolling the dice and we end up landing on the negative. So we end up with a negative one. When you have an odd power like this, seven's an odd number, you will get a negative answer. Now let's compare that with the other guy here negative two uh, raised to the three power. What is that gonna be equal to? Negative two times negative two times negative two, right? So here you have two times two is four, but really this is gonna be a positive four because it's uh, negative times negative is positive. So then when you take the positive four times this, you'll get a negative eight because the signs are different. So this is actually negative eight. So all of that is basically to say the actual problem statement really boils down to what? It boils down to 12 times the negative one to the seventh power, but we now know that that's just negative one, times the negative two to the third power, but we now know that that's just negative eight. So now you have a problem that you can just do. 12 times negative one will give you negative 12, because positive times negative is negative, and then you still have to multiply by negative eight. And so for the final answer, 12 times eight is 96, Negative times negative is positive, so it's positive 96. So that's the final answer here. We're just getting some, some practice with multiplying, uh, with simplifying uh, expressions that involve multiplication of negative and positive numbers. So we're just going to do some more problems in the next section. What I want you to do is make sure that you can solve all of these yourself. So you get a sheet of paper, you watch this again, you solve all of these yourself, make sure you're getting the right answer. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll get some more practice with it right now.